Hello model railroaders, it's Dave. Welcome back to the layout. Well, with uh, doing all the uh, industrial, well I call it industrial, the construction adhesive, to use the proper terminology, um, I ended up giving a try as far as dealing with the magnets and the two bits of foam. So I'll just give you a, a run through what I did. There's a, I drilled a 25 64th uh, hole in the, in the foam and that's just using a uh, brad point bit and uh, just enough to sink in past the, uh, the depth of the magnet as you can see on this side right here. Now, I did give a try here, but I had forgotten that super glue eats foam. And it didn't take me very long to remember that fact. So uh, I gave it a, another try on the back side. Now, what I did <clears throat> was after doing the hole, I put in some of the... Uh, construction adhesive and I ended up using one of the angle blocks and a tissue paper or a little square of tissue paper or of the parchment paper. Now beware that uh, on the construction adhesive it says you can get it a little wet and it'll speed up the curing time. Well, I did, and it wasn't this block I used, but it was this block, and as you can see, if I can get it in front of the camera, you can see there's a little bit of rust tarnish, and that's even after I've tried to uh, buff it out with some rubbing alcohol and a uh, cotton wipe. So, uh, very perturbed that that happened, and you can see I ended up using a square of the parchment paper and you can see the rust on it. It didn't take long uh, for the little bit of moisture that was still on the foam to get to work on that nice unoiled steel surface. So the uh, gist of it was the to put the magnet in put a covering over it so that if there was any oozing of the uh, adhesive that it wouldn't get on the steel piece and then just have the magnet adhere to the uh, angle iron and then of course I just blocked the foam so that it wasn't going, wasn't going anywhere and then I gave it Oh, probably about two hours to set. Once that piece was set, then I did the same thing to my other test piece. First, after putting the second magnet, adhering it to the one that was already stuck in the foam, and then pushing them together to get the imprint of this magnet on the op on this piece of foam, if that makes any sense. So the magnet still stayed stuck to here, push them together, get the indentation on the foam, and then with the drill bit, go in, auger the hole out and deep enough that the, it'll take the magnet, stick some construction adhesive in. In this case, I used a piece of tissue paper, and then put the foam on, uh, sorry, <laughs> got ahead of myself. Pulled the magnet off that was stuck onto this piece, put a piece of tissue paper over top of that, put the magnet back on over top of the tissue paper, put it down and then line the other piece up so that it mushed it in the hole. And then of course did the blocking of it to hold it in place and uh, let that go for a couple hours. Well, in this case, it went more than a couple hours. It went 
24 because I'm just getting back to it tonight. So when I came down earlier, I uh, pulled the blocks off and then opened it up and there was just a little adherence of uh, some adhesive to the tissue paper but it came off clean. So now I've got a nice solid surface so when everything is flat both pieces are are flat so I'll try and get it off to the side but when everything's on a flat surface everything is lining up so any lateral bumps won't uh, really impact the uh, the joint of the two foam pieces now some of you may have seen on Ken Patterson's What's Neat this week where he did a, an end scale oval and he used uh, the rare earth magnets to actually hold the pieces together and in his case because he was dealing with very large foam pieces he actually routered out the foam stuck a piece of wood and glued that into the foam and then r drilled a hole for the magnet in the wood now in my case I'm only dealing with two inch risers because you know my end scale tracks going on the top so I don't have a lot of foam to auger out or router out I should say to insert any you know half inch plywood or uh, any piece of uh, pine in there to do that now what he was doing was in joining two pieces of an oval together where it needs to stand up to some abuse. In my case I'm hoping that I will rarely, once the pieces are locked in together, I'll rarely ever have to undo them. Maybe when I'm doing the scenery I'll be taking them apart but once the scenery is done, unless I have to disconnect the modules, I shouldn't need to take them apart and it's more a, if I do take them apart, that it'll, they'll align perfectly uh, or as close to perfect as I can make it so that the track will line up as well that's going to be on top of the risers. So that's where the joinery is. And, you know, I'll give Ken full credit for... for uh, that uh, what's neat this week because that made me remember that I had some rare earth magnets uh, stuck to my uh, steel desk over there and uh, the light bulb went on I went oh I can use that with a little modification to suit my purpose now for sticking this to the bench I could do the same thing uh, drill a hole in the uh, plywood bench stick a magnet down there, do the same thing with the bottom and have the magnet adhere there. I don't want to futz around with uh, drilling holes in the bench top. Uh, so I was looking at a different way of adhering this to the, the, to the layout top so it's not going to be pushing around or flexing on a long piece of foam. Now I could have say that was a bolt gone in through the uh, the bottom of the plywood and had a bolt that would then stick into the uh, surface of the foam but as it if it got manipulated it would start augering that foam hole out and causing slop so I didn't really want that and I didn't want bolts if I ever have to move the layout that are sticking up through the plywood that can get caught or scratched walls when, when stuff's getting moved and things of that nature so I didn't really consider that a, a great option I had these uh, little angle brackets that uh, I was using for my backdrops and uh, these I got from my brother he worked uh, for a company and I don't know if they were punched wrong but uh, these brackets are probably <laughs> a good uh, 30 years old at this point. They're just uh, galvanized steel. 
but you could use any any piece of uh, 90 degree steel to perform this purpose. What I did is I got some ceiling anchors uh, where it's a screw, a wood screw on the one end and a metal screw on the other and then I just got some uh, lock, wash, lock nuts with the, uh, the locking washer built into it so that I could screw it down in and that would essentially make my uh, my bolt but it would have uh, a wood screw on the top and I can always unscrew it to get it out. Now I could probably have done done it with a flat bolt but I didn't want to get the, the hole too sloppy and in this case I can just get because uh, I widen the hole to a quarter inch I can just get the wood screw to go through before the bolt is uh, free free rolling so if I had to unscrew it just the finger tight pressure uh, of the nut into that uh, lock washer at the top is enough so as you can see I just drilled a uh, eighth inch hole and then screwed in to the side uh, the bolt. Now what I did was I lined up the, uh, the bracket, made sure it was 90 degrees so it wouldn't be canting the, uh, the riser. I just drew a little hole, drew around the inside of the hole with a marker just to give me a center point and then I just hand twisted in with a, an ancient 8 inch drill bit to uh, get that uh, get that hole in there. So that is enough and I just have to find the right one to do that and then come back on and then I can tighten it finger tight with uh, the nut on the end and then just go over to when it's on the layout of course drill a hole through one of the lower brackets and uh, screw that with one screw down and the whole uh, section of foam won't be pushing around or, or flexing. Now the only thing to be careful of as you can see when I push down on this this 90 isn't quite flat because I it is raising up the foam riser. So that's all I'll have to be careful of is that when the foam uh, is done, when I go to use that angle bracket that the foam isn't rocking, I should say. So that's uh, what I'm going to try and do. Uh, I'm going to give it an attempt and see if it actually works. So that uh, those curved pieces are what I was wanting uh, to use the magnets on that they can lock in to the fixed straight pieces and then when if I need to remove it I just have to deal with the joint uh, the track uh, that's going over the joint remove that five inch section of track and off of each end and then I can literally just lift the uh, the foam block out of the way and I'm hoping that will easily come out even when scenic uh, because I can at least take the, the foam, work on it uh, on the bench here to make sure that I've got a flat bottom and then take it back to the layout and uh, put it back on. Now these are fairly strong magnets, probably smaller magnets would work just as well. I'm just using what I've got. So hopefully you'll find that interesting or a thought uh, to uh, possibly use on your layout. So, uh, approaching my 15 minute mark, so I'll say bye for now and uh, talk to you on the next video.